Utopia tonight. I'm I'm doing fucking great, man. How are you? Me too. I'm so excited about today's guest. It, Me too. It, so so excited. I feel like he's he's been a part of my life since my youth. At, Same. I remember, at, at the day I remember getting put onto Everclear, my brother was a huge fan, and he's like, and I I was into hip hop, and he's like, you want to come to this concert? Red Man's opening up, and I said, yeah, let's go. Right? It was in the, it was in Manhattan, and I'm like, yeah, I'm in. I went there, and they switched out um the Black Eyed Peas for Red Man, and I'm like, oh. I was so oh, mad, shit. Right? but it was like the backpack group Black Eyed Peas. So I was right, like, right. Oh, they were okay, but Everclear mm-hmm. stole <laughs> me. I was like, yeah. I love this group, and the music became anthems for like ever. Oh my god! Yeah, right? I remember being late for class because I wouldn't get out of the car until I finished the song. <laughs> like yeah. in high school, just like blasting it on the radio. So good, man. good shit, dude. That's the only reason why I'm in a good mood because I had the fucking second. Uh, vaccine shot and i told you it's been kicking my ass man and i've been like in kind of like a a fog for like the last couple days and then uh, just this show is pumping me up so great man well without further ado i don't want to leave him backstage too yeah, much no, let's let's do the intro man uh fucking lead singer of Everclear, um uh, a political activist um just uh an amazing 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 dude uh guitarist just uh, art alexis let it bring him out guys let him hear it hey what's going on man What's going on? So the show, the tour you saw, hey guys, thanks for having me on, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> you saw Tom. That was the Snowcore tour. Yes. Of 1999. Mm. And Red Man got kicked off the tour. Because <laughs> 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 in get Fargo, off? North Dakota, this true story, Fargo, North Dakota, because he was caught in the back of the um, his tour bus with an underage girl he was caught by the sheriff of fargo and he just didn't by by accident was with the sheriff's 15 year old daughter get the oh my fuck God. out and holy like, oh. shit he goes man i'm sorry i'm out of here dude and then two days later he was on the dmx tour big big <laughs> big ass dmx tour he knew he was going on that fucking tour oh <laughs> wow like, but 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 that's cool and yeah and that was uh that was the the um black eyed peas before fergie yes right? wow yeah, yeah. Yes, before they had a chick in the band it was it was uh it was they a different were, thing yeah that was was fucking, totally that's different crazy thing. with the sheriff's daughter that's like a movie that's not a fucking that doesn't happen to people <laughs> i mean i love red man man that guy was so fucking like i grew up in a black neighborhood i grew up in a housing project in la and he's from new york but we mm-hmm. talked a lot of our growing up was very similar. I mean, I'm white. He's black. So there were right. definitely huge differences there. Um, but, uh, I mean, just in a lot of the, the cultural things that, that we grew up with in the 70s and 80s um, was, was there for us. And and uh, I loved having him on tour. I watched him every night. And then wow. uh, and that was a great tour. Soul Coffin. Um, yeah. DJ yeah. Mello. Um, yeah. DJ Shadow, DJ Shadow. So, anyways, blah blah blah. What's going on, boys? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, man. I'm just coming off my uh, my second vaccine. So, uh, which one? Um, yeah, the, uh, uh, Pfizer. I got Pfizer. Pfizer. So the second one's the kicker, right? Yeah. yeah it's, second- it's it really. Ha- I I didn't I didn't uh, not that I didn't believe it, man. But I was like, no, nah, I'll be all right. And it fucking floored me. Um, no, dick in the dirt, dude. Yeah, dirt. I, I'm like, which I'm like, I'm like, I, I know you said you you had had COVID, so that must have been a a fucking nightmare. And was, you had long COVID, you said, right? It was worse. Yeah, I had long haul COVID. I um, but I got the uh, when I got the the vaccine, I got the J and J about a month. Oh, ago, okay, a little over a month ago, wow. about five weeks ago. Right. Because I I don't know if you know it, but I was diagnosed five years ago with uh, multiple sclerosis. So, yes. and apparently I'd had it for 20 years before they diagnosed me. So wow. I've had it for like 25 years. And uh, 
they wanted me to get the Johnson and Johnson because of my autoimmune disease, whatever. I got it um, for about a day and a half. I felt mild COVID symptoms, body mm -hmm. aches, fat super fatigue, you know, and I was in bed for about a day and then I was up and, and I woke up one morning, gone. And now wow. my wife got the Moderna a week ago. So she's getting the second one, May 2nd. And sucks because I got a show on May 21st. So I got to leave, right? Right. And, uh, so I'm I'm bringing her mom in because I hear that second one's gonna gonna kick her ass probably. Yeah. Maybe. I really, I mean, I, I heard it had different effects on different people and stuff. And I know that if you're, they, there's a bunch of stuff people say that if you're younger, you know, and you have a stronger immune system, you have a stronger reaction to it. And I was cruising just fine after I got it. Um, and then uh, I woke up at six o'clock in the morning, mad, like a headache, like I've never fucking had before. Um, dizziness, uh, uh, the whole body ache thing. And then... Um, I just, I like wrote it out or whatever. And then the next day still felt the same way. And now I feel like I'm fine. None of that, but I'm definitely in a fog and I can't seem to shake that yet either. So I don't know how long this shit lasts. Okay. We'll take that feeling, right? Mm -hmm. Multiply it by about three and take it for about two months Holy with shit. pneumonia. That's what oh, I Oh God. Wow. I okay. can't fucking... How the hell did you even survive that, dude? Dude, I'm, I'm I, you know, I, I say this not arrogantly, but just anyone who knows me, I don't know why, but I'm a fucking tough motherfucker. I just am. <laughs> I mean, yeah. You know, I, I you got, you got, <laughs> I believe you know, it. Three drug overdoses, um, heart <laughs> stopped once, defibrillators. I mean, right. It's fucking hard to count multiple sclerosis. <laughs> You know, uh, right. MS. Yeah. And you said for 25 years, you, they, they basically said you have it. Was it the, cause you, you had gotten into a car accident, right? And then they diagnosed you. Would they have even found it otherwise? I don't know. I don't know. No. I was starting to have more serious, uh, balance issues. And, um, uh, you know, I just, just, I wasn't, I, I thought it was age. I just thought it was age and that mm -hmm. I had, you know, I had, you know, a little bit about my past. I've been yeah. pretty hard into drugs and drinking for many years. And I've, right. been, I've been sober almost 32 years now. But, you know, Congrats, shit, man. shit takes its toll. Mm -hmm. And um, I was just like, okay, this is how it's going to be. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know what's funny? A lot of people watching, one of the gentlemen that's on our station, uh, Justin Gonzalez, also an MS warrior, which me and him mm -hmm. bonded because my wife is an MS warrior. Oh, but God bless you. Yeah, no, but I say we have it, like me and her have it. I you do like have a couple it. Things. You do. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. How's she doing? Does she have RRMS or progressive? RRMS, very okay. similar. Knock on wood. We take Copax, and I think you might be the same. Yeah. Come here, brother. You know what's funny? Nice. She, doesn't, she doesn't like shots, so I give her her shot. She's never injected it herself. Really? Just, she, yeah, she's wow. You don't have the little shot? You don't have the injector thing? It's, I don't know if you use that, but it's so much better to use it without it because it's well, way less aggressive. I get. I got to tell you something. I disagree. All right. Really? For one thing, I'm an ex drug addict, so <laughs> getting a needle in my hand like this, yeah. right? I don't know how to spell trigger in really big letters, but that's yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, I man. put it in that little plastic thing. I push the button, wow. pokes me in the tummy or wherever. Yeah. You know, you gotta find fat on you, which I'm having no problem right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> My God! <laughs> yeah, you were saying you got the COVID fifteen going on. Oh, let's 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 be honest. COVID twenty three. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's up there. But it was know, a hard winter, dude. No, you know what it was? I was doing okay. I was doing okay. I put about five on because I had mm -hmm. stopped being a vegan and started eating meat. But I was swimming three hundred meters a day. I got a, oh, I got wow. a big ass pool in my backyard, and mm -hmm. um, I. Uh, and and I built the pool because swimming is one thing, as you know, for with, yeah. with MS, so you don't get overheated. I can't, yeah, right. I can't run, I can't like fully like you know, I, I work out in a gym with a trainer once a week and I do PT and stuff, mm -hmm. but I don't like work out where I'm sweating like I used to or play basketball or I can't do that shit anymore. Yeah, um, right. so swim. And mm -hmm. um when I got COVID. They put me on for a month on steroids. 
And wow. Oh my God. I am for one, I hate them. They just right. make me feel horrible. And two, I was just eating everything. My poor <laughs> wife would make me dinner. She made me a huge dinner and I'd be like, is there any more? <laughs> I just felt defeated. She wanted to go just lay down and put her head right. under the couch, man. It was just like Yeah. Because I couldn't get enough food. Just couldn't. And guess what? It's all right here. <laughs> all right here. That's all right. That's all right. I've already lost four pounds in, in the last two weeks. So I'm, I'm yeah. you know, by the time the my uh, Summerland, t- the, the tour in uh, July starts, I'll be I'll be down. Nice. Yeah, no, I feel you, man. You'll lose again. I feel. I told you from like here down is all green screen. I'm huge. Uh, <laughs> so why I look like I'm giving an Apple presentation in '88. You know what yeah, I mean? I've been cheese has been my favorite thing to eat during this whole thing, and it's really kind of. I looked up like do, is cheese good for you, and then I found out that it's not, and then I just tried to find uh, not posts remotely. that said it was. No, it's not. Not, not for you. There's nothing good about cheese. It's, no, it's 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 bad fat. It's mm-hmm. uh, it's good fats. It's bad fat. It's mm-hmm. uh, inflammatory. Um, there's all these things I could tell you about. Um, Tom, has your wife ever read uh, Doctor Walls, Terry Walls? I got it above my. I keep all my books above my bed. Like that's one of the I, ones I read. I actually oh, met. Nice. Her. I actually got to Did meet. Did you really? Her. Yeah, man. She's badass. This woman, just so you know, John. This mm-hmm. woman was a, um, a biologist, and she yeah. got MS. And she got it. She got progressive MS, which is primary progressive, Scary. really bad. Right. And so she couldn't even be in a wheelchair. She was in bed. And finally, she devised a protocol of diet and exercise. And now she she rides bikes. She wow. rides she rides three Ks. You know. Wow. Um, is progressive so is, is progressive what Selma Blair wound up having? I no. believe. She- I think she was secondary progressive. Secondary but they, progressive? They reverse because she was in such a long inflammation. And then okay. is it secondary progressive? I don't okay. I don't think she was prime because primary is very aggressive. Like it hits you like a truck and keeps going. It never hers, hers is pretty hers is pretty aggressive, man. Yeah, hers is I don't know did if you've you see, seen her recently, you know, but it's well I know up the treatments. She did the well, uh, she's got she's gotten the uh the stem you know, cell treatments. Yeah, yeah she's, she's gotten that a couple of times. Yeah, I'm okay. at the point. I don't feel like I need that yet. I right. might. I would, right? No, you yeah. know, I don't well, think. how does? Can you explain for people who don't know what exactly you like a normal day for you going through that kind of thing when it hits, when it doesn't hit? Well, for one thing, I have insomnia really bad, and I so mm. if I sleep yeah. more than five hours a night, that's pretty good. My wife so, is the same night. Huh? My wife is exactly the yeah. same. Is that I'll because of the? Is that because of the MS, or is that just you naturally? It's MS. Mm-hmm. And also, mm-hmm. I'm a 59 year old guy, so I got to go to the bathroom three times a night. You, know? <laughs> you guys will find that out. Yes, I you hope. Will. <laughs> yes, you will. Um, and you can blame your prostate on that one. Um, so just letting you know, the Falcons pick is in. Number four pick is in. Um, All right. <laughs> so, the crowd wants to know too. This is great. <laughs> so so um, I I I just like. I don't know. My um so a day for me. Walking is difficult. It's difficult. I gotta stretch mm. every day. If I don't stretch every day, and then I try to walk about a half a mile, a mile before breakfast in my right. backyard or, or up and down the street. And uh do you do it, yoga? I, I do I do I did do yoga before. I haven't been doing it. I'm gonna start yoga again, but mm. really what I want to start doing is tai chi. And uh, um, because I think that would help with my balance. And another thing too, Tom, is for if your wife has balance issues, is is um, riding horses is supposed to be really good too. Really? Yeah. Wow! Yeah. I figured that'd be rough on you. It, I don't think it's easy, but I think it's good for you if you can do it. Wow! Yeah, I don't that's know. Incredible. But a friend of mine I get- just bought three horses for his one daughter, which makes no sense. But um, <laughs> he's a guy that came yeah. from the hood too, and he just buy three of everything. <laughs> Ferraris, buy three Ferraris. <laughs> Why? Oh God, that's hilarious. <laughs> Seriously, this dude was a crack at a crack dealer. Now he's multimillionaire. God bless. Oh, they went Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts. I love him out of Florida. Nice. 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 
Okay. Anyway, um, I'm a horrible interview today. I apologize. No, it's fine. Um, I've never had somebody give up sports updates as the interview. This is great. I know. I know, but I've just been waiting <laughs> for this all day. Oh, anyway. That's um, crazy. But, but then, you know, for the rest of the day, John, as far as my days go, I just try to, I try to swim. I try to stay healthy. I, I try to eat a good diet and stay mm-hmm. away from inflammatory foods. Um, um, That's and, a big uh, it's hot. It's tough for me because I'm a coffee drinker and I like a little sweetness in my coffee. But yeah. Date syrup instead. And uh, I don't, I don't uh, drink milk. I drink, but I do eat cheese every now and then, which is not good for you. There you, you. go. Bad for you like John said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, was, I was eating the vegan cheese for a while, and it's just... It's not the same. I know. I try to do that horrible. shit, too. It's horrible. Yeah. It's horrible. And, I mean, and the truth about the vegan cheese is I would put so much on top of whatever I was eating to cover up the taste of the vegan cheese. It didn't matter. But you just you just, you just wiped out any benefit that you were getting from the vegan cheese. Yeah. So, One of the guys on our channel, again, who's, who suffers with MS, Justin Gonzalez, was a touring opera singer, and he had memory issues because of his MS. Do you find you have any of that kind of trouble doing the music and song? What, I'm sorry, what did you say? Do you have any kind of trouble with memory issues? Yeah, I, <laughs> I said memory, not hearing, so I wasn't sure which way you were going in that direction. I was like, oh, maybe you didn't hear me. Maybe it cut out. I don't know. <laughs> no, um, I... Uh... Yes, yes, I do have memory issues. But then again, is it because of DMS? Is it because I'm 59 years old? Is it because I took more LSD than most people uh, you know, <laughs> than a football team of hippies? Um, hey, I'm thinking yeah. about the LSD, dude, just because it's supposed to uh, cure depression, right? Isn't that what they say now? Micro-dose, no, that's what micro-dose. they said in 1957. That's what, that's what <laughs> the, the, Timothy, what's his name, was saying. Right. No, 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 you don't think so? Fuck All right. No. <laughs> crazy. If I took acid again, I'd lose my fucking mind. <laughs> I would just be like eating bugs out in the backyard. Is it? <laughs> it but it, the it protein, the diaper. protein art. What it about? Uh... So, and then my wife would have a like leash on me so I don't go in the deep end. <laughs> man, that sounds sexy. She's like, man, I'm gonna drown that motherfucker. Get that, <laughs> get that life insurance. I got lots of life insurance. So, <laughs> oh god, well, I don't blame her. If I ever get progressive, dude, I'm gonna put like Underwood deviled ham all over my body and walk out into the desert <laughs> no <laughs> and, and let the coyotes eat me. Do you know Underwood yours? Underwood Deviled Ham would be a great name for an album. So hold on to that. If you, you need it, if you have any, is, do you? <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I love it. So I don't cool. know what it is. It's so good. It's so bad for you. Is it's it? Okay. Yeah, it's so white trash. I grew up eating that. Shit. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> is it like spam? Oh my god, I love it. It's better than spam. Better than okay. spam. Oh, spam. spam yeah. <laughs> I like that you took a hard st- Stance on spam. I appreciate that. We haven't had any controversy on this show yet. So no, no, spam. Uh, no actually, boy, you don't you don't fuck around with like uh Pacific Islanders and spam. Um they don't mess around with that, dude. They like yeah. that. Oh god, it's so fucking gross. It's like like, I've had it oh. with Hawaii. Well, I've had I, it before it's ugh. yeah, well, Hawaii definitely. It but you know, I grew up eating it because my mom would make it every now and then. It wasn't my favorite, but right. I think my dad, you know, from World War II being in the Pacific, got mm-hmm. a got a hankering for it. So, wow. she it. and she would just like chunk chunk these big big chunks like this big and this thick and just <laughs> fry <it. laughs> boom white bread. There you go, baby. <laughs> and I remember once I took that to school and I had two spam sandwiches and mm-hmm. in like third or fourth grade and there was these. I lived in the projects, and the projects were primarily black. There was very few, I'd say like 3% white people and probably about 20% Hispanics. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was one building in the deepest, darkest part of the uh, complex uh, of the projects. And when I say dark, it's just like there was trees and stuff over there, and, and there was tagging on every building, gang tagging, not on the Samoan building. No uh, one really? fuck with those people. No, no one fuck with those people. You wanted those no. people to be your friend. And when those two guys <laughs> saw that 
I had a spam sandwich. One, they thought I was the coolest kid ever. This was fun. <laughs> like it. And I gave I gave one to they were twins. I gave one Smart. to one. I gave one to the other. They gave me their peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And those guys, no one fucked with me oh. ever, after that. Ever. Wow. Because as long as those guys were there. Because yeah. Just yeah. Cause spam. Yeah. Spam. Wow. That's a great, what a great, we're going to make that into a commercial for spam, man. That's a great advertisement. Spam, <laughs> spam to, the, to the thuggish <laughs> twins. <laughs> They'll protect you. No, I'm sure those guys are probably, one of them was probably Troy Pollum. Paula. I, I, <laughs> you guys, the rock. Or the rock. Could have been the rock. Could have been. Yeah. We'll have yeah. to ask him. We'll no, send the him the clip. Tongan. He's Tongan. Yeah. Okay. When I was in a, um, where was I? In uh, Iraq in 2008, we played a bass mm -hmm. in Iraq during the war, and uh, the guard that guard the guard the people that were guarding the headquarters there were the you know four star general was were Tongan <laughs> Marines. Oh wow. wow! No one wanted to mess with those guys. God damn! At, at all. So wait a minute. I just want to get something straight. What you're telling me is, if The Rock becomes president, all I have to do to filibuster is get him a spam sandwich. <laughs> what is that? That's all I have Dude, to do to get something well, done. You know, I, he's not a little kid living in the project, so <laughs> I think I think he can afford his own spam. So what you're saying is, go for Kevin Hart. <laughs> um, um, that was, that was my Kevin Hart. That was, your, that was good. That was a good Kevin Hart. I saw it right away. <laughs> um because you da you dabbled in the politics thing before how the hell did you even get involved i mean you spoke in front of congress which has got to be the most intimidating thing like or did you not give a shit because you're just at the time Fuck those people yeah i, I mean <laughs> i agree I, I didn't give a shit i agree I, yeah. I, I mean i was a little nervous at first but i saw their indifference and mm -hmm. their their apathy and their fake interests you right. know especially the republicans um yep. at the time and it just kind of enraged me a little bit and it set a fire in my belly and i had a script that i was going off and i just tossed it to the side and i started talking to him and i was pointing mm -hmm. at him, henry hyde and all these other people that were on it hold on cincinnati's on the clock <laughs> <laughs> this episode of Dystopia brought to you by Spam and the NFL Draft. <laughs> and the NFL, NFL Draft. draft. Yeah. I like your book. And the NFL Draft. Oh, oh, that's great. Oh, man. I wish you could see this dude, Jamar Chase. <laughs> that guy looks crisp. He's an all white suit with a little white silk um, half mock turtle, mock neck. Oh, turtle shit. Huh. Mock turtle neck. That's oh. fancy. <laughs> These guys are. Fans. I can't pull off a turtleneck. I can't do it. Well, I got so much neck, and now I got so much skin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, laugh all you want, fuckers. It's gonna happen to you. It's gonna happen to you. You still got all your hair, though, dude. You know what I mean? That's that's well, fucking something. There, there you go. Well, no, man, I, got, I, got, I got. My dad was bald. Had the Don Rickles by the time he was like 37, 38. Oh, it goes, wow. it goes on your mom. On your mom's yeah. side. Apparently. On your mom's side, yeah. Yeah, and my my dad, my my mom's dad was a hillbilly that had, you know, he he, he had super high peaked forehead, but that's kind of what I got. It is what yeah. it is, man. No, yeah. I don't have he's a still... head of hair like you. How about you? How about you, Tom? Yeah, you hiding I mean, hair? yeah oh, he's got hair. Okay. Yeah, I'm all right for now. It's funny, me and my brother with. We sound exactly alike, but if you look at this, he grows this crazy beard that I can't grow, and mm. he lost a little bit up top. So I'm I'm getting a little thin, but I'm in my 40s, so I'll take it. I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not man. Apparently, I'm like part Wookie because I've got the whole thing. I don't know. You're it's a just, Wookie. Or, yeah. <laughs> You're a Wookie. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate are, that. Are you Italian? Of Italian? I'm Italian. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm just so same though. thing. It's very similar. Only, you know, I'm a 59-year-old Greek man. Mm -hmm. You think I'd be able to grow facial hair, right? right. I have the worst beard ever. It's all spread. Really? Yeah, my brother at the age of 17 was shaving from here, from cheekbone to collarbone, right? Holy shit. Yeah. And my dad, same way. 
Not me. And it just skipped you? Yeah, but I got more hair than that motherfucker ever did. So. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Oh, my <laughs> God. What are you going to yeah. do? Wait, go back to the. You were telling me about Congress, and you started uh, pointing at Hyde, and uh... I was, I was talking. I, I got my swagger because they, they, you know, when you get into a room and people just like automatically judge you, and they think, they of know course, what all about. Oh, yeah. this guy's a rocker guy, and you know, and that was respectful. I wore a suit, you know. Sure. I came in there. I respect the the, the process. Mm -hmm. and I respect the the what was going on, but I right. just got this feeling from them. That you know, uh, it just this a bullshit white superiority, and yeah. I, even as a white guy, I just got this feeling of old school classism, and I just got kind of pissy. Instead of getting angry, I just I got smart, smart ass, and just I just got my swagger up. Like I like when I walk on stage. Before I walk on stage in front of thousands of people. Mm -hmm. I get nervous every time. Yeah. yeah. Learn how to turn that nervous energy into uh that into energy, into into power and, mm -hmm. and swagger. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. If you can't do that, it's like you every night in front of a mic, you've mm -hmm. got to have that. Yeah. You might not feel like it, but you got to find it from somewhere and you got to have Absolutely. it. Absolutely. It's actually comforting to hear you say that because you do kind of wonder if it ever goes away. And most of the time, whenever I talk to anybody who's been doing it for a while, they're like, absolutely not. <laughs> so you're just like, you never lose that. It's always kind of there. And you just, it's fight or flight. Yeah, it, it is fight or flight. And I learned young that I'm a fighter. Yeah. You know, um, other, other people were abused and raped when they were younger like me and they became victims or mm -hmm. victimizers. Right. I never became either. I came close to being a victimizer. I mean, you could look at it as just my all the women I've had sex with in my life, and you know, four marriages. Um, mm -hmm. You know, all that all that relates back to that being being sure. sexualized and sensualized when they're eight years old, raped right. by, by you know young men, teenagers. It, it was it was devastating. I mean, if it ha do you guys have kids? Not yet. Not yet I don't. I hope so soon. No. Yeah. You don't either have good children. No. Well, just to imagine your child have, having that done to them. Couldn't it, even imagine. It enrages me. Right. Man. And my mother, yeah. I never told my mother. My mother never knew. Never really? told. Her. Didn't even talk about it till after she died. Because oh she, my mom was a sweet, old school, hillbilly woman grumpy mm -hmm. kind of pissed off because my dad mistreated her and she left him which was big to do in the late 60s early 70s you know because mm -hmm. divorced women were not regarded with any respect at that it took time. a lot of strength yeah. right it, did. it took took balls and swagger uh and but my mom was old school man she kept the 38 under her mattress wow she wasn't fucking around yeah she, you, you know you weren't Is we that didn't have much but you weren't gonna take it from us that right, was her, right. Is that was her is idea? Is that kind of where you got your fight from? Did you get it from your mother? I get it from my mom. Nice. Tenacity, just tenacity. Yeah. And I, I don't think I would have had the success I had if it wasn't for, for her. She taught me tenacity and just, just, and also going through all the stuff I did. Pain. I was talking about that with my therapist today. I think pain, and going through pain and learning, when you get knocked down, it's not about how you get knocked down or how often you get knocked down. It's about how you get back up again and how you right. pick yourself back up and how you learn to do it with grace and how you learn from what happened before, you know? Yeah. And I know that sounds like a Hallmark card. No, it's true. In, in practice, it's true. Mm -hmm. And um, I life coach people. I'm, I'm actually about a month away from being accredited. I'm in a program where I'm going to start working with, uh, uh, alcohol and drug people uh, and get my accreditation for that later this year. And then uh, get my uh, psychology degree in the next two, three years. That really? is incredible, and, dude. Congrats, man. I That's fucking work. awesome. I want to, I need to start giving back. I need to, and plus mm -hmm. I need something to do that. I enjoy doing that. I have a skill set doing um, after this is all done. You you've know, always, you've well, always you've been always been giving back though. Oh, sorry. Tom. Yeah. No, no I was going to say you were, 
Yeah, you, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is a routine that he and I Just do every day. For the, for <laughs> the love of God. God. <laughs> we haven't even met in person yet. This is only virtual. I can't even. Seriously. Oh, seriously. We met yeah, this is pandemic. A, this is yeah. all the pandemic, man. Yeah. Uh, no, what I, what I was going to say was, I mean, you, you, you said you, you got to start giving back, man, but you have, you've been given, you've been, you've been active in, in politics and in gay rights. I mean, you did get the, I think this is the one you went to Congress for. You got the, um, the Compassion for Children and Child Support Enforcement Act passed. That's the one you it went to. It didn't get passed. It, it didn't get passed. passed. It said it got passed on the. Oh no, no it's never been passed. No, it then, was. It, it was. It was. It was nicknamed the Deadbeat Dad Rule, um, mm -hmm. Deadbeat Dad Law or Bill, and uh, but it was exactly what you just called it. And um, HR, I think it was HR two fourteen. Um, uh, yeah, HR fourteen eighty eight. Yeah, fourteen eighty eight. Yeah, 214, I think, is a, is a quaalude. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was something. Um, but, uh, I, um, uh, you know, I, I just, uh, yeah, no, it didn't get passed. And actually, that bill, to give respect to the other side of the aisle, to Republicans, that bill was by a super conservative guy, Henry Hyde, Mm -hmm. And uh, Lynn, I forget her name, was an extremely liberal Democrat. They came together and wrote that, wrote wow. that bill, and it would have got passed. It would have been piggybacked, but that was right before um, the 2000 election. And mm -hmm. after the 2000 election, there hasn't been bipartisan nothing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Nothing, no, I know. Nothing worth a damn. Anyway. Nope. I, I feel you, man. And because you were also uh, a, a big uh, opponent to the uh, Prop 8 and stuff like that. And that was from your time, I guess, when you were younger, you said you had spent some time in Castro. Well, I, 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 lived, in, um, I lived in San Francisco for about five years. Mm -hmm. and there, was, there was a time in, I, I'd say in the late 80s, so 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, mm -hmm. um, and moved to Portland in late 91. Not ninety two, um, mm -hmm. I uh, yeah, I worked. I worked. I, I wanted to work for for free as a volunteer for the for the AIDS project, which was just raging at the time. Right, and yeah. um, I just I did it for like a week, and I just started having like horrible panic attacks and depression. And wow. so I helped in a different way, but I couldn't go into people's houses. Just couldn't handle it. Right. I, I'm a tough guy. Pull a knife on me, I can handle that. But sure, yeah. Watching a man shrivel up and die. Yeah. That's got to be traumatic as hell, man. Oh, dude. Yeah. And not a and, lot of not a lot of compassion outside of the Castro at that point. Right. And I was reading something that an interview you gave, and you said uh, something that I love you to just expand on. You said you were aware of Harvey Milk. Um, before anybody else was, do you just mean from hanging out with the, like you knew of his, you know, uh, I, career or I just knew, in, I knew of him. Okay. I, you know, I, I, I knew of like, you know, people I knew, I had friends that were in the community, you know, in mm -hmm. the gay community. And, uh, um, I just, you know, I played in bands and there was people in, in the, in the band community that, that were there and we'd go over there and it was just, as a matter of fact, when I was 16 years old, living in Santa Monica, the guy who lived in the front apartment, um, my mom went out of town for a week and asked me if I wanted to go with him and some friends to, because uh, he knew I was a fan, see the Sex Pistols at Winterland. Nice. Right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, sure, I'd like to go. So I went up there. We took three cars up there. Stayed in, stayed in the... Um, in in, in uh, the Castro, surrounded by gay men, when mm -hmm. you know the leather guys, you know, <laughs> well, drag drag queens went to my first drag bar. You know, I was right. sixteen, and they're sneaking me into a drag bar, in, in, you know, and um, in Noe Valley, and uh, I couldn't have been safer. I seriously, yeah. I couldn't have been more like people sweet to me taking care of me, no, no weird vibes, no mm -hmm. scary vibes, no, no, nothing, just yeah. 
sweetness and compassion. And wow. it just it just opened my heart to like at the age of 16 to what could be. And it's the and that's when I first heard about Harvey Milk because he was a con you know, a, a, a city city council member at the time. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, gotta be a, a crazy experience to have at that age too, especially around that time because of all the negative shit you, you know that was put out about the gay community and gays in general and then for you to have that kind of transformative you know uh experience, experience at a young age is incredible up until up until just recently i remember back in 2004 there was still ballot measures that um would get knocked down because they're unconstitutional but city of denver city of portland uh different cities had anti-gay uh gay things pass you right. know um e even in california you know? yeah, yeah um and um i just i i i was very grateful for a lot of the things uh <laughs> you got some have a you corn got something chip? to eat i a was little, just... <laughs> little blue organic corn chip <laughs> nice. and and tom's always telling me not to eat on air how dare you sir i'm using I'm an asmr food eating tag <laughs> it says it in my contract i'm a guest I, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I read the rider <laughs> exactly. Oh, that's funny. Oh, did you send me these over? Thanks, dude. <laughs> <laughs> funny. You hey, any time. My wife. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I, I, re <laughs> I really think that you are, you have been a help and inspiration to so many people. Like mm -hmm. beyond like, even like all of the stuff you've been through, you're brave enough to talk about it. And then people that have been through it could associate with you. And it's, it, you've been through so much and you've never hit anything. Like you've never kept it closed off. It's right. always been out there in your music or in you've put it into the world so people could see that you could be strong even if you went through this, 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 and this. Right up to the latest one. Like the latest song is super moving. I kept listening to it over and over. Yeah. It resonated so much with me. Which one? Hot water test? Hot water yeah, test. Man, yeah. Hot water yeah. test. Which I know? never knew, by the way. You know I, about I, the title? Yeah, yeah, I did not know that that was how they did that back then. I mean, did, did you always know that, or did it come across researching no. it? Well, yeah. So, excuse me, I'll stop you. No, no, no. Um, no, this makes me, this is great. But the right here <laughs> is, is just like addictive. <laughs> um, okay. So, I, I I was in a car accident in 2016. Mm -hmm. um, no one got hurt. A um, couple of weeks later, I started getting like a pinched nerve in my neck, call my right. doctor. He's like, it's probably a pinched nerve. I'm going to send you in for an M MR MRI. Go get an mm -hmm. MRI. I'll see where it is. Come in. I'll give you an epidural. No problem. Mm -hmm. Give you a shot in the neck right where it is. Right. Uh, and you'll be fine. And uh, I went and did that. And I walk into his office. Well, it's not an office. It's like his little room where he would see me. And it's literally like the size of a, normal bathroom you know like maybe seven by ten you know, right 15. and you know three adults could be in there not really comfortably and i walk <laughs> in there and there's six guys in there himself included with steth stethoscopes and clipboards and as i walk in they all look at me and i'm just like oh fuck i don't know what this <laughs> is but this ain't good Right. And then they told me, and two of the guys were neurologists, and they had looked at the MRI, and the other guys had looked at them and um, said that, yeah, they're pretty convinced I had RRMS and uh, that I should get a second opinion and find a neurologist. And um, I, I came out of there just like in the song. I walked out of there. I felt it. Um, I walked all the way to my car, mm -hmm. saw people. Tried to be, you know, upbeat, smile, joking, mm -hmm. you know, my normal self. Yeah. Walked to my car, called my wife on the cell phone, and told her. And just as I said the words, I have, I have MS. I have multiple sclerosis. I just, we both started bawling, mm -hmm. just bawling. I haven't cried like that. I don't know how long. Wow. Years, yeah. Twenty years, and um. You know, we talked about it, and she asked me questions. I told her what the doctors had said. Hung up the phone. So, baby, I got to drive. I can't drive and talk to you. I just, I can't do it right now. So, I drove home from the valley to Pasadena, about 20 miles. 
by the time I get home, my wife's on the bed. She's got my computer, her computer, my daughter's iPad. She looks like mm-hmm. she's walking into fucking Fort Knox or something. <laughs> <laughs> and she's just like, look, you know, going here, going over here, going, baby, we got this. That's right. Yeah. We got this. We can do this. This is this is not going to define you. We're not going to let it define you. And it just that right there. And she had l- learned all this stuff. And I, I, we just read about it all night. And I, I read about the hot water, that hot bath test, hot water test that they wow. had done in the 1800s, early 1900s. Yeah. Um, and um, it was just, but her saying that to me um, just made me feel like, okay, I'm part of a team. And when yeah. you're part of a team, um, it really makes anything hard that much easier when you got someone with you. Just yeah. like your wife, man. Yeah. Uh, we, when we were not married yet, and it was funny because I was like, in, in your head, you're like, this is either going to make us or break <laughs> us, right? It totally made us. I think it's what made us bond so much more because, like, it was, it's not something that's going to stop you. And, you know, when they give you RRMS, you don't know anything. So you start thinking the worst because all you picture is the worst because that's all the mm-hmm. well, Everyone has. thinks that, you know, it's like oh, Jerry Lewis does a, <laughs> yeah. 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 Only frame of reference. He when, he, when he was alive you know yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 150 years ago and that wasn't right. MS, that was muscular dystrophy yeah right my um my i was gonna say well just go back to that my mom they can't my mom's been to uh the doctors several times for several similar symptoms either between lupus and ms and to this day they still can't give her a definitive diagnosis they see something, you know, on, on her brain. They don't know what it is so far as whatever, but she's got all these, you know, and not, and not one of them is particularly extreme either way. Where does she but live? Where, she, where does she live? She lives in New Jersey. She lives in, uh, uh, yeah. Oh. Um, um, what's it called? I thought you were going to be like, I hate New Jersey. Lyme, Lyme, fuck New Jersey. <laughs> Lyme disease. Lyme disease. It could be Lyme. My it could be lying. It's with that. very similar, right? It's very okay. similar. Yeah. The lesions on your brain look very similar. The difference is I don't think they're on your spine. Um, oh. Okay. And um, I'm surprised her neuro her neurologist uh, hasn't brought that up. Yeah, and, I don't know. Uh, that's another thing too. I know she's been going through all that too. I think she may have been. I, neither you said it. I don't know. She may have been tested for Lyme because my stepdad had it, and um, but he, uh-huh. had, you know. Hmm? I'm he asked. had Lyme's disease. No, he had Lyme's Lyme disease. disease. Yeah, he had had Lyme's. Um, and then, but he had like, I guess he, he whatever it was, he he dealt with it. He, he managed. It was it was never really a factor. Like he had had it for a bit. Um, I don't know if you could ever like fully get rid of it, but he had it where it was basically in remission and it was fine. Yeah, th- that's easier to go into remission than than uh, MS or or even yeah. RA or or um, any. A typical immune disease, yeah. Yeah, she's uh, always worried about the memory. I have a friend, have a friend yeah, that now? went into oh. remission. I have a friend that went into remission from MS. Wow, it's totally doable, and diet means a lot. It really does mean a lot. We find diet if you tremendous. Your wife does plant based, right, Tom? We went, we went. You know what? We went fully plant based, and we were great with it. To pescatarian, so we'd still have fish here and there. Okay. And then lately, we've been cheating, and you can see it. We could feel the difference. And it's funny because we didn't – like, I did it two New Year's ago, right before COVID hit. We were like, oh, you know what? Let's just try plant-based. I'm getting older. I got all these aches. And she, we do it, and her, everything, like, dropped off. We haven't really seen a big flare. But it's stress and diet are, like, so much with MS that triggers of stress and diet. And I feel like after all you've been through, it's not – my wife, one of her first symptoms that she remembered is she used to be like – you ever get those floating spots? And I'm like, no, that's not a normal thing. Well, <laughs> well, actually, everybody has a couple of them. People with MS have thousands of them. And I've had hundreds of them since I was a child. Really? They're starting to think, maybe I've had MS since I was born. Wow. Wow. Because wow. I don't ever crazy. remember have, having that, that first attack. I don't remember right. that. Yeah. The, the closest I can think of is the times that I've went out on drugs that, um, you know, uh, or like got brought back by the defibrillators. I mean, that was pretty traumatic. 
you know, or I yeah. got shot. I got shot uh, when I was younger and knifed. Um, wow. But, you know, I, 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 I don't remember having that thing. But like your wife, I'm sure, and like your mom, um, when we get sick, we get sicker than yeah. the average baby, Yeah. You know? And uh, it's and um, and age has a lot to do with it too. Your wife's probably what early forties, late thirties. No, uh, mid thirties. She's mid thirties. Yeah, yeah well, I got okay. a couple of years on her. And, yeah, and, and that's <laughs> <laughs> dude. My wife's thirty eight. I'm fifty fifty nine. Hey, good for you. Good Way to brag. <laughs> Humble brag. Oh, I wouldn't Humble brag. <laughs> <laughs> oh god that, that's the thing though too like you you would just describe like a million things that you had gone through and all those symptoms could have been you know from any one of those things it's a hard it feels like it's like again my mom is 61 um you know and sometimes she has you know uh, some issues that are similar to that memory issues and stuff like that and sometimes i'm just like it could just be you know stress she's or She's 61. Yeah. Exactly. Which I, she'd kill me if I'd said her age. I did just say her age now. So now uh, she's not allowed <laughs> well, to watch two, this. She's two years, two years older than me. She's a spring chicken. <laughs> um, oh, she'll be so, so happy that you said that. So uh, are, <laughs> um, of course, the guy who's married to the 38 year old. right? <laughs> um, I'm going to cut that part out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> never happened. Oh, God. Never that, throw it away. You are, uh, um, um, by the way, you. Everybody I've I've talked to about you who know who, who loves your music knows you, but people who have met you, you have a reputation for being like one of the nicest dudes. By the way, you have like you're. I don't know if you know this. Um, I have uh one of my one of my uh friends who's a comedian. Um, she's basically like our comedy mom, just in the business in general. Uh, she's been doing it forever. Her name is Carol Montgomery, and she took her her son Lane when he was super young. Who was it was in a band now as well, and he's a singer. Um, but when he was when he was a kid, he took them her to him to see you guys, and you were live, and you were bringing people up onto the stage. And at one point, it was you. You were just I don't know if you was something you would did all the time or whatever. But at this particular show, you were just whoever wanted to come up, you were just grabbing people. Well, and usually being, girls, but, but like, <laughs> I would bring. Yeah, because guys are assholes. Guys yes, I like, I agree. Guys want to grope girls or jump off stage or show people their dick. And no one wants to see anybody's <laughs> dick. You know? I don't really true. want my dick. Right? Yeah. And, and, well, now know, they just text it. That's what I'm hearing. So it's just, it's not as... <laughs> they don't even go about? on stage to do it. <laughs> what, what is that about? Do you think that... I'm one... sorry. That's just my generation, man. I don't know what to tell you. What is with it's... you people? I don't you know. I'm sorry. Go away? You think Listen. it's just... It's going to float off into the ether and just go away? <laughs> You right, do that's know it's what John sends as a parting gift to the cast. Exactly. Get that about I'm just like, I'm <laughs> sure, I've got your number, man. You're gonna get one with a gift card and everything. It's in a bowl. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's uh, you might, it's a good you it's a good one it's classy. You, know, you might not like what you see. Dude. <laughs> You do, you do realize that's how we're going to be voting in the future, right? Because it's every part of my generation is going to have a nude <laughs> at some point. So we're just going to be swiping through a booth like, nope, nope, oh, oh. <laughs> nope, the next that's too small. I'd nail her. Okay, I'm going to vote. Oh, that, that is, that, is that Pelosi? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah how did that get in there like politics, um, but i don't want to so, go there no 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 I, no I hear you so but that was like so so you, you know you were bringing people on stage or whatever and being the 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 mother that she is at the time she just started like elbowing people to get to the front of her stage because her son loved you know loved you guys and loved the band and uh i think it had reached like the limit or whatever and you saw that there was a kid that wanted to get on and you it was like wait 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 and you like pointed and the audience because of that like helped him up and you got him onto the stage and you and he, like it's like something that she never forgets and he never forgets and then you had seen them after the show and you were like hey you're the you're the little dude who came up on stage and you were super nice and you talked to him and uh and he just uh you know he he, he always remembers that moment man and he's been a huge fan ever since yeah. um and it was you at know, a casino i think it was at, like a casino gig she said you know it's so much easier to just be nice to people isn't it mm -hmm. it just really is Absolutely, I mean, the total dick to me. Um, I can, I can, 
I can, I can do that. You know, yeah, I can do that. But for the most part, um, especially kids and single yeah. moms, I just, I've got a, a soft place in my heart. I got a soft place in my heart for anyone who, well, for one, that likes my music. You know, yeah, yeah, of course. A comedian, if people like what you do, why not? How can you not like them, right? Yeah, um, exactly. But at the same time, I am, um, I just am just so grateful for being able to do what I do. And I know it's not, and I'm, I'm in meetings. I do AA meetings on, on Zoom, and I actually love it, to be honest with you. And mm -hmm. uh, wow. I, I, one of the things I, I constantly hear from the guys, and these are all guys who have been in the music business for years and years and years and years. We're all very grateful just to be here. And yeah. I'm grateful that, dude, I get to play rock and roll for a living still. Even after COVID, we're still getting shows every day. I've, I've yeah. already got, I've got like 60 shows booked for the rest of the year. Oh, wow. Dude, that's so great. I know I'm, I'm already, I've had a bag packed for the last six months just because I'm like, I just want to go back out on the road. I want to go back. $1,500 in. <laughs> <laughs> well, $1, I'm like, $1, exactly. $1, I'm like, you want me to, you want me to drive with the window down and wave? I'm there. Where do you need me to go? I'm in, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm just ready to fucking go back out. That's all I want to do. Dude, and you're right too. Like, uh, oh, somebody asked if you're coming to the Philly area. Uh, you know, we want to. Pennsylvania is not. They're still under mandate, and they're under um, um, you know, uh, they they're 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 not having any kind of shows yet. But okay. apparently the numbers are going down now and they think that they're going to be able to start booking shows like the electric factory out doing the outdoor mm -hmm. stage. Um, and, uh, Pennsylvania, like, uh, excuse me, Pittsburgh stage AE, and, you know, the outdoor stages should be, um, booking in the next two months. So this is the deal. We're doing a tour called Summerland. We haven't okay. announced the bands. We're going to announce them on May 3rd. Mm -hmm. And, um, some classic bands, classic alternative rock bands. Nice. And um, one band is a band that I kind of really look up to. They came out late, late eighties and Ooh. there would be, there wouldn't be alternative rock without these guys. And okay. I just, I can't wait to be on tour with them. It's going to be <sighs> so much fun. Can you tell it? Can, you can't tell us who yet. No, All right, that's fair. Right. That's fair. Oh, I can't wait now, though. You'll tell yeah. us after the show, right? I'll get to it. We'll get to it. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you off, Mike. You got, you got to promise <laughs> me you won't tell. I won't. Yeah, I won't say anything. Oh, this is great. Right. We'll give a secret for a secret. We'll tell you a secret <laughs> that nobody else knows. <laughs> if you like rock, if you like rock, you're going to love this tour. Four bands, uh, all rock bands, rock American rock and roll. And um, we're going to go out in Jan in July. We've got almost 25 dates booked. we got a a couple fill-ins here and there and a couple, like I say, it's depending on like certain markets like St. Louis, we got a hold on a date and an offer, but that we can't finalize it until May 1st. It, it you know, the numbers are going down. Mm -hmm. Once the governor says, boom, we're, we're at this tier now, then they can book the date. So, wow. and that's where Pennsylvania is at. And New Jersey, unfortunately, but we're we're hoping. So we're going to do a leg in July, um, and then we're going to do a leg in late uh, September, October, and that's when we'll do the East Coast. And uh, hopefully, you know, the, the usual suspects like like um, the Paramount out in Long Island and uh, yeah. Earth Plaza, and, and uh, we'll see. I mean, where we get offers from, but the I think there'll be more indoor shows in the fall. Oh, that's yeah. awesome, man. We'll see, man. I mean, yeah, you know, uh, it's, I, I'm just, I'm just grateful to go out. I, I played a show this weekend in Dodge city, Kansas, and it was only 650 nice. people. And they were just, it was like they had, were seeing Led Zeppelin. Yeah, and man. They were so excited about seeing a band. Yeah. And it was just, it was phenomenal. It was, it's crazy. Uh, that's the thing that I love about that is like, they're just, they, people haven't been out. So they're just excited no matter, you know what I mean? Like they're just happy to be out among other people and to get entertained. I did a, um, Asbury Park had a, um, 
like a uh, like a Live Aid kind of a thing for artists, for sure artists or whatever. And I was one of the people who just kind of went up to help raise money and to, and to talk to the and the crowd. So I had to be in front of a camera, but they did have like a small crew of the Stone Pony that was there. And like Great they fun. were just, yeah, I love that. Oh, so good. So, um, you know, even being on stage there and I was only doing a few minutes of time in between bands, but the small crowd that worked there, man, they were just, it looks like they were just fucking excited just to see somebody else, you know, uh, and be somebody out. Somebody do something, man. I know. Right? <laughs> I could do something, you know. I know. I, I just, I just, I, I feel for the people who live in like small apartments and, and, during the worst of it, we're there with, you know, one person and it, yeah. it's just like, man, I hope your relationship's strong, dude. Yeah. I mean, I get a, a nice house. It's not huge, but I got a backyard, a pool, a, a yeah. front yard. I've got, we've got room so my daughter can do her thing. My wife can do her thing. I can do my thing. And we're not on top of each other, but then we, but yeah. we come together for meals and mm -hmm. at night and watch a show. Um, you guys ever watch that show, The Goldbergs? Oh you my know? God! Yeah, of course. Absolutely. It's so fucking funny. It is. Jeff Garland is amazing in it. Oh, my, which one's Jeff Garland? Jeff Garland's the dad. The heavy set. He's yeah. the dad. Oh, Murray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you yeah. moron. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think the kid who plays Barry is just out of oh. his fucking mind. Yeah. That, so that, that's, but we just, we just, you know, we found that show and we're like. We're like halfway through all the seasons right now. I think we're in the beginning of the fourth season. But um, we we just it, it's great that we have that ability to be together and mm -hmm. be apart. But but we're still together. And now my daughter went back to in in person school three weeks ago. Um, you know I'm doing shows. Uh, yeah. My wife's seeing friends. And we're all socially distanced, but we're all got the vaccine mm -hmm. and uh it's uh it's exciting that it's opening opening up and i think for a lot of people we're like not taking it for granted we're very i, I think you guys probably agree appreciative just so yes. appreciative so oh. grateful yeah. oh my god i get to go get a burger at a, at a restaurant and not have yes. to put it in a fucking clamshell you know <laughs> yeah it, it yeah, changed man. people's I, outlook to yeah, see, like, I, you know what's important, and uh, what one person that said they had a huge, uh, huge influence. You had a huge influence on their relationship with their daughter. Is another host on the channel who I'd like to bring on real quick. That just wanted to stop in and tell you how impactful you were on uh, his life too. Hold on one second. I'm going to bring in Scott Curtis. How are you, Scott? Hey, everybody. Art, Art. This is the Make a Wish portion of the show. <laughs> <laughs> I, su I suffer from the same thing you do, old age. So I, I just, I ju I just want to say that in the 90s, I was raising children, so I wasn't paying much attention to music. And my daughter, who was born in 90, was in the boy bands in the 90s. And then all of a sudden, I hear out of her room, Santa Monica, and I didn't know anything about you. And she is jamming out to it, and she's like, I love this band. And she, to this day, Everclear is one of her favorite bands. And she's, I mean, she's just 30. She's, she's like John's age, um, but just absolutely loves your band. And, you know, those songs will come on, Father of Mine, uh, Santa Monica, whatever, and we'll just sing them together. And it's, it was a real bonding thing, and it was kind of her her way out of the boy band stuff and spice girls and all that into the more alternative stuff. And she turned me on to like Eve six and all, all, all those bands. And I, I thought it was really cool because I was always a alternative guy and I was a Jesus and Mary chain guy. And I was a joy division guy and all that stuff. And it was just really cool that she got that gene from me. And I, I learned a view from her. Well, thank you very much for saying that. Give my best to your daughter. She's two years older than my oldest daughter. Who was born in ninety two. Uh -huh. yeah. That's why I moved to Portland. It was because my girlfriend, who was from Portland at the time, moved to um, San Francisco, where I lived, and had a band. And uh, uh, she got pregnant, and then we moved to Portland uh, at the end of ninety one. And my daughter was born in June of ninety six. Uh -huh. And uh, Oh, excuse me, 92, 92. 
Um, and that was the year I started Everclear in April of 92. Yeah. So, you know, it was, um, I appreciate you saying that. And it's funny because my daughter went through a little bit of the boy band thing. And uh, <laughs> yeah. oh, no. I, actually, I took her to see the, the, the Backstreet Boys when they played. <laughs> and I was just like, I couldn't believe how much estrogen was in that room oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> you ever go to any of those shows no <laughs> my my wife actually took her to all the boy band shows she saw in sync and backstreet boys and wow. i didn't go to that yeah yeah dude, i'll tell you one thing those backstreet boys they had the hottest groupies backstage i had ever seen yeah <laughs> <laughs> and I could write. I, I'm gonna write a book someday. I could write a book about groupies. Trust yeah. Me. Oh, oh man. Please do. But these, the, these, the. Oh my God. It was. <laughs> but uh, oh and man, the sweetest guys. They were so nice to my daughter. Yeah. Um, so I had still- one. I had one question for you, Art, because um, these these babies are so young, they don't know anything about music. Um, it, I, uh, Being in California, did you ever get a chance to, like, see an X and Blaster show or anything I, cool like I, that? I wanted to be John Doe so bad. I love him. Yeah. I wanted to be wow. John Doe. You can look at me in the early late 70s, early 80s. I was such a fan of the i found the ramones in late 77 yeah and then i started hearing about this club and i was 15 yeah. and I started hearing about this club called the mask and i would go there and try to sneak in and brendan mullins the guy who ran it would just this irish thug would just kick me out of there and so, <laughs> finally one time i'm just like fucking let me just watch the band i just want to see x yeah, <laughs> I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna drink. I'm not gonna hurt anything. Just let me fucking see the band. And he's like, "Right, stand over there. Don't fucking move." <laughs> <laughs> and then he would walk by, and he would give me like a whiskey, like some whiskey drink, and just and not even look at me, talking to people. Just hand me like a Jack and Coke or something, and walk by. I'm sitting wow. like on a straw. Which is one of the least rock and roll things you can do. Yeah. <laughs> Looking down my, 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 my Jack and Coke, watching X, just going, this is the best night of my life. Yeah. <laughs> it's up there. With the day my, my kids were born, they married my, my, my fourth wife. Yeah. God, God willing, I'm still with her. 17 years later um but nice yeah you know i know i was huge into x um say a line i'll tell you what song the album it's on and what yeah album yeah wow. I, and, I mean, and john doe's solo I stuff is just uh is just wonderful it, I, just I, like love yours. The I love yeah. the yeah yeah so you know yeah. no, all that stuff um i grew up in the in that scene that's when i started coming of age and going to shows um, I never really got into the super hardcore uh, scene of like, you know, Black Flag and stuff like that. And a lot mm-hmm. of the South Bay bands, uh-huh. because it was all about jocks. It was all about the jocks, yeah. you know, yeah. from the suburbs. Right. And it wasn't about the weird kids, you yeah. know, anymore, like like it had been before, like the early punk. Like, you know, uh, you, did you ever see the movie uh, Decline of Western Civilization, the first one? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right I'm in that. You can see me for about a split second at the X show. Uh-huh. I've got long hair and a ponytail, and I'm jumping. I'm jumping up, and then there's another scene where I'm in a fight with a guy because I was constantly getting in fights because I had long hair. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't cut my hair. Yeah, and I I wish I had because I would have had such a hot punk rock girlfriend. And <laughs> no, no. Dude, my uncle had long hair back in the day, when, and and people would like harass the shit out of him. I remember, uh, I was I had to be told. So we were he was picking me up from school one day. We lived in uh, Arizona for a bit, and he had long hair Bummer. when he lived in Arizona. Uh, yeah, uh, and he picked me up from school, but he couldn't. He, he didn't drive, so we were walking, and somebody's <laughs> mother. Uh, had like like pulled up alongside as I was walking with my uncle, and he had he had long blonde like hair down to like here, right? And he loved like uh, all that kind of music and stuff too. So we're walking, and she's like, "John, do you know this man?" And for whatever reason, I didn't answer. And he was like, "Tell her <laughs> I'm your uncle." And I was just like, 
nope. And I, <laughs> but I didn't understand. <laughs> I didn't understand the severity of like, I'm like, who the fuck is she? Why is she asking? I know who you're like. So I just like kept like eyeballing straight. But people used to do that to him all the time. And I had to be told later, like, if someone asks, like, I'd be like, why? And I'm like, well, they don't trust I'm, people with long hair. Well, why? <laughs> I'm, I'm so surprised he didn't just kick the shit out of you. When you got <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My mom would have. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was like, I don't know why I'm answering it. Door shut, and then the rings would have came out in the back of the head. <laughs> yeah. Boom. So well, I, I think I think one I of my parents long. watched Oprah at the time, and they they knew you weren't allowed to hit kids anymore or some shit. So I yeah. I did it when I was young, young. We missed that, huh, brother? We missed yeah, that. No doubt. <laughs> yeah, I got yeah. You guys didn't no, have Oprah. We, we were doing we were doing the same drugs at the same time. So I I feel you. Um, <laughs> believe it or not, I actually used to have long hair, but I was six five, and the problem was is I was always pushed to the front of the show, and uh, one time I got was pissed off at me because I'm tall and tried to set my hair on fire and my buddy who was uh, a lot more prone to fighting than I was uh, knocked him out with a one punch and oh, that, that was the end of that yeah yeah you gotta get <laughs> that's him. incredible right there right yeah. there the yeah <laughs> you get that sweet spot yeah they just, they just crumple they just I don't care how big they are how smart you are. Yeah. You just wait for that shot. You get that shot. They go down. And it's then it's an electric silver. Yeah. yeah. I just got to say, it's a real honor to talk to you. I actually, my, I had my grandson on FaceTime last night, and my, I told my daughter, I said, you know, I might get to talk to Art tomorrow night. I don't know. And she's like, oh, wow, that would be really cool. So I can't wait to tell her that I actually got to talk to you. Well, give her my best, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. 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 And thank you for coming on and saying hi. It's been, the, the show has been fun. I've been, I, they haven't told you, but I've been watching the NFL draft. Oh, I watched the whole thing. Yeah. I watched the whole thing. You know, yeah, I'll, I'll stop and I'll be like, and the Bears. Carlos Nelson, who's behind me, has been doing. Oh, shut up. I don't want to hear what you <laughs> No, Art, you're a typical boomer. You're just eating and watching TV and you don't give a fuck. So that's, I, this, I appreciate that. This has been my favorite oh, interview. Fire. It's so relaxed. It is such a this good is, this is the This is the oh, epitome of what oh, this show is supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> I just I'm want so I just want Tom to know I'm bringing on a sandwich next time we do an interview. I'm doing it. I don't care who <laughs> it is. I'm not a guest. I'm not a guest. <laughs> bringing on a four course meal. I'm having steak. Uh, doing it all. Yeah. I have what I mean? have listen. I have a bit of controversy that I want to ask you about because I read about this online. This is going to be a hard hitting question. Oh, uh, yeah. You were on you were on Space Ghost Coast to Coast oh, and they didn't no. and they didn't air it. What Never. happened? I don't know. I did the interview and it was awesome. It was a producer and I was sitting there in the chair and they were asking me these fucking insane questions. <laughs> insane questions. Like if you had flowers and you were going to give flowers to someone, what color would the drapes be in their guest bedroom? <laughs> Be like, <laughs> what? Oh, God. I'm just like, and I, I didn't care because I'd seen the show, and I'm just like, dude, I love the show. I'm like, oh my God, they asked me, they flew me to New York to do this, and this was just like awesome, and they never aired it. So my, obviously my answers are stupid. So they aired, oh. they aired the fucking Matthew Sweet show, but they didn't air yours. That's that's nuts. a good fucking point. That's a yeah. good juxtaposition. <laughs> I mean, First I all, love I Matthew really Sweet. I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, love, I love him. I love but, Matthew Sweet, but I, yeah. I, I agree with what you say. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to agree with what you say. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know they flew people out for an animated show. This is horseshit. They don't even fly. <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't get flown out for regular shows. Are you on Comedy Central? <laughs> no, I'm not. You're, You're right. <laughs> Did you ever see Zorax trailer? Holy oh. shit, that was excellent. <laughs> oh, that's true. They had a budget Zor back then. That's I why. Got, and they gave me things to say to Zorax, you know? And mm. I was like flirting with Zorax. You know? <laughs> I was like, getting, maybe that's why they didn't do it because I was getting kind of kind of raw on Zorax. What I, about, uh, I got a thing for bugs. What can no, I, I hear you, man. <laughs> it's probably the leftover LSD. Do you have flashbacks? Is that a thing that people have? Mentioned earlier. 
you would be in the backyard eating bugs. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's gotta, oh, so it's gotta be ever did, acid. did you ever do acid? Not oh, yeah. No, my buddy did, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, we did. We did. Oh, art. Yeah. yeah. I did so much of it. Yeah. I used to have parties when I had long hair in like the early 80s, late 70s. People would come over to the house. And I'd be like, hey, what's going on? They'd be like, Art, what's in your hair? <laughs> <laughs> it's a head of acid. And I'd be like, cool. <laughs> like how many do you have? I go, I don't know, four or five. <laughs> you know? Oh my god! Go, There's another head of acid. <laughs> I, I would buy acid by the sheets, right? And then mm -hmm. I would pop them up, and inadvertently, I wasn't the smartest guy. Never had been the sharpest tool in the drawer, and I would take acid and then start cutting them up. So some some. Hits were really big. You know? Oh shit! <laughs> yeah. So you were peaking like three days later, right? <laughs> <laughs> the most I ever took was seventeen hits. Oh man! Well, you wow. got me beat. Yeah. Holy rough. fuck! Yeah, it took like three days, and I was just yeah. Air was all greasy and shit. But no <laughs> wonder why you're still going. Like it's like you, Isn't Keith it Richards. It, what? Oh, no, no, Keith's got me beat. Keith, <laughs> Keith is like cockroaches. He's going to yeah. be a cockroach. Dude. I mean, <laughs> fuck. For, for a while, I had a Sirius XM uh, radio show. On lithium. And, and I got, yeah. I would go on as guests on the, like, you know, NFL shows and stuff because they knew I was a fan. And uh, they were kind of amazed that I, I knew so much about it. Cause I'm like, well, yeah, I know about it. Cause I fucking listen to you guys every day. <laughs> but uh, Because as I've gotten older, it's like, this is my release. It's like, you know, mm. it, it's like if you're a comedian, you don't just listen to comedians all the time. Right. You know, yeah. That shit, yeah. You know? yeah. And, and football and, and pol political radio. I, I, that's what I listen to is my release, but political Same. radio Will make me crazy. Oh you know? God, yeah. dude, me too. I, I had a, I, you, people in the face. Yep, especially yeah. with this fucking year that just went by. I mean, oh I was God. I was losing my goddamn mind, dude. I, I there was there was too much. I, to I was drinking reading. for the first time in thirty years. Holy I, wow. shit! Election, yeah. dude. I was like, yeah. Hurting. Oh my God. I know, man. I couldn't sleep. I was up. I I kept. I had CNN on constantly. Watching what the hell was going on, I didn't sleep for like three days until they yeah, announced it. I'm just like, don't concede, don't concede, don't. I know, concede. fuck, I know. It was, it was crazy, rough. dude. But um, yeah, um, but no, I, I, I'm, I'm so grateful for. I'm even, I'm grateful for for my MS. I'm grateful for all this, all this shit that's happened because it's really taught me the meaning of gratitude and just to be able to be on a show with you guys and meet you guys and just talk some shit as guys and just mm -hmm. have fun. And yeah, just, man. And I hope people find it entertaining. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, we're watching. we got people watching now, man. And it's going to be, it's going to be great when it goes up too. Okay. I'm not going to lie. I'm grateful. I'm, and I, I don't mean, mean this in any way, but I'm grateful that you got a mess as well, because I feel like when high, like high profile people, can shine a light on something that like everyday people don't. So there's so many mm -hmm. people walking around with it that nobody knows because you can't see it. So if you look at you, you wouldn't say, hey, that guy's got something. But when somebody's like, hey, your song resonates with so many people that they're like, wow, this is a thing. Let's take a look. at." I'm actually doing a fundraiser this weekend for the Walk MS for Walk MS. So mm -hmm. I do it every year. And it's funny because like we're super blessed. We're not in a position where we need help right now. But there's so many people out there that you see that do. That you're like, all right, if we're in such a good position, why shouldn't we help another person, you know? Well, yeah. Why not? It, giving back is just, yeah. as you get older, man, it's just like, um, that's what really, really matters in life is, yeah. is, is people. And like I said over and over, it sounds like Hallmark cards. It sounds like cliches. Cliches are cliches because they're true, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And things that get repeated often by people different people from different backgrounds, different ethnicities, different races, different um, economic strata, and we can still find common ground in a lot of stuff. And that's yep. just finding 
be nice to people. Just be nice to people. Yeah. yeah. You, you say yeah. that people say that about me. I learned a long time ago, it's so much easier to be nice to people than to be a dick. You yeah. really got to go out of your way to do that and make life difficult. And trust me, um, you guys probably know as well as I do, don't meet your heroes because you, they're going to just... <laughs> not yeah, always. Yeah. Not always. Like, not always. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I met you and I'm not turned <laughs> off. So <laughs> your cool. hero... <laughs> no. Our, you, you, you gotta know you gotta know that your music first of all it holds up all the way from the first album and i listen to it not for nostalgia i listen to it because it's good yeah so that's a good point so uh you know i i, I absolutely hate nostalgia because is, uh, is uh has cut into our call are you still on your interview? I'm still on this call. Come eat dinner. Your dinner's cold. Oh my <laughs> Eat it on the show. We've already been eating this whole time. It's fine. It was Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> that is that's my favorite moment of any episode I've done so far. Is somebody's somebody's wife who's just had enough. <laughs> like, you tell those boys not. to stop talking. You come eat dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you still doing this shit? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, like, I don't want to keep you, man. So I'm like, no, 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 man. Uh, it's just, okay. I'm like, These guys won't shut the fuck up. And she's like, I know you. It's you. <laughs> you won't stop that. <laughs> I know you. <laughs> I'm so oh, grateful God. for my wife, man. She's so hot. She's 20 years younger than me smarter than me um better than me in every fucking way taught me what love really means and she after 17 years still likes me nice. that's a big thing that's the yeah. most important thing still sleeps with me which is awesome yeah. how many yeah. people have been married for 17 years still have sex not a lot. That's true, man. <laughs> not much. okay i gotta cut i gotta cut in here it's been 31 and i'm still going pretty strong so just that's FYI. you're a badass yeah, she quit, she quit after twenty, but he's still going. <laughs> Listen, I oh, get it. The three of you are oh. the three of you are haven't been alone during COVID. I get it. I understand. <laughs> it's I get brag about it some more. I went to my doctor's get for the first time. What's going on? What, what's the matter with you? What is, I mean, I can do something about it, man. You. I, did, I didn't know. I didn't know it was going to hit when it hit. Otherwise, I would have shacked up. It would have been fine. <laughs> but, but it hit. We went into lockdown, and I have a cat. So that's. Uh, oh dear. That's it. Oh dear. Oh God. <laughs> no, but but I mean, all joking aside, just the fact that we still really love each other and like each more than love, like each other mm -hmm. and make each other laugh. And, yeah. and um, I'm just really grateful for that. Bless. Um, and, and I really, I'm grateful for you guys. And thank you for coming on and telling, telling me that you like what I do, man. That means a lot to me. It really mm -hmm. does. The end of the Seriously, thank, thanks for coming on and, and talking with you this entire time before, like leading up to this and your, uh, I believe I think it's your publicist that I've been talking to. You guys were super professional, super nice. Uh, is it jo Joey? Is his name right? Well, Joey's actually my day to day manager. Day to day, um, your manager couldn't yeah. have been nicer, by the way. I mean, between my manager talking to him and then him emailing me, and uh, you guys were so accommodating. This was the smoothest, you know, uh, transition ever. So I can't thank you guys enough. You've been amazing. Could I well, just ask one question before we go? I just wanted to ask. All right, if you would give young you before you started out one piece of advice, what would you give yourself? I already knew this. I had learned this from my mom. We talked about tenacity, but yeah. I, I guess I would, I would have, you know, don't give up. You give mm -hmm. up. Someone behind you, like, could you get out of my spotlight, please? You're done. You you don't want this. Like I want. Th I want this. Yeah. And you gotta really fucking want it, man. You, it, John, you do comedy, man. Mm -hmm. That's hard. I mean, yeah. some nights you're just not funny. And you think, you know, you know what I mean? You yeah, exact. Some Absolutely. nights <laughs> you are funny. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and even funny people, it's just like some nights you don't have it. And mm -hmm. you've got to be able to just politely tell the world to go fuck itself. Yep. Me, I'm going to do this. Meant in love, you know, it's like I say that to kids as they're growing up. 
you're going to get to a place where you can lovingly tell your parents to, to fuck off. That's, yeah. That's when you grow up. It's just like, don't tell me what to do anymore. It's time for me to go make my own mistakes. And um, that that was something that I, I, I just, you know, when I was younger, I think to answer your question, Tom, um, I used to get really, I had, I had anger issues and this goes back to the PTSD from the rape and all that stuff and abandonment, my brother dying of an overdose when I was 12, just all these different things added up to it. So, um, not getting accepted by people or given a chance by people like that time I walked into Congress and people judging me, I, I would get enraged and, Mm -hmm. I think if someone could have told me younger, don't pay attention to what any of those fuckers say. Fuck them. Do your thing. Be you. Learn how to be you and learn how to, that you'll find your your true family. Rarely are we all born into our own, our real family. Most of us find our family in the world as we go and that you would you will find your own family. And Great. if someone had told me that, I think... I would have, uh, I could have done without a lot of anxiety and depression. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, man. I think that's where a lot of like the bonding with you happened for so many like teenagers. Like in my, I guess my generation, when you found you, you were expressing in your music all of that that you had been through, that, that feeling you were able to orate and connect with so many people. And I think that's what made like you're still being loved by everybody that goes through that transition. You know, like it's, it's so human that people just you know that you express it so eloquently well I, well I, I thank you for saying that i i love that because like the bands i grew up falling in love with the punk rock bands um you know i, I loved hard rock and stuff that was aggressive before it. but when punk rock and it's and like x x was my favorite band for mm-hmm. years and years and years fucking a and i the thing about them is that their lyrics we're talking about in a poetic way. We're talking about, you know, um, you know, fucking getting into bar fights and 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 finding ways to 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 navigate life that we're down to earth and that we're real. And that yeah. appealed to me, and it still does. And I think that's in my music that down to earth, common senseness and storytelling. You know, yeah. from first person. A lot of people think all my songs are autobiographic. They're not. I'd say a third of them are, you know. Mm-hmm. And then a third of them are taken from different things in my life and I make an amalgam of characters and, and build a song around that. And then a third of them are just songs that I just create. Like there's a song called Queen of the Air that's on our second album, Sparkle and Fade, that uh, right, Tom. my bass, my my drummer at the that played on the record, my drummer at the time is like, Man, I'm really sorry about your mom, man. That, that sucks. <laughs> I go, Look, my mom lives in Beaverton, man. I'm going out to, I'm taking her to Benny Hunt. And <laughs> what are you talking about? He goes, We're that's that's not about your mom. I go, No, I I I would go by this bookstore every morning, or not every morning, but when I go to this one restaurant, there was this bookstore, and I love like vintage books. Old books, mm-hmm. and I could see this Damn. one book on the shelf, and it was old and gilded, and and you know, I had gold leaf and stuff, and it was called Victoria, Queen of the Airlines, and I didn't know what it was about because every time I would go by there, the store wasn't open on Sunday, and then uh-huh. finally I went there once when it was open, walked in there, grabbed the book, opened it up, and it was some stupid young adult book from like <laughs> nine. 19- 14 <laughs> about this girl that left her house to go, you know, on the road with balloonists who were like, <laughs> you know, ballooning across America. Wow. Fucking stupid book, which is funny because someone just bought me that that first edition of that book. That's wow. fucking hysterical. <laughs> Holy shit. It's a horrible book. I like but, how you took the, <laughs> but, but you just, took it and made it something 10 times better than it ever was. It, 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 yeah, I think I did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You absolutely did. Arrogant. It just—it's better than what it was. Fuck yeah! Just from the 
that description. But it's about a guy who's talking about his mom jumping off a bridge that thought he thought it was her aunt, his aunt. Yeah. And um, you know, and I got the idea from different old songs I'd listened to and stuff I, I had fantasized about and 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 it was just, you know, I grew up listening to a lot of heavy hard rock and acid rock and Motown and funk because I lived in the projects. And then I had one sister who was super hippie and listened to a lot of singer songwriters, Joni Mitchell, James Taylor, lots of Neil yeah, Young, big, big influence, Neil Young. So I have Neil a lot amazing. of amazing influences. I like a diff- lot of different types of music. Mm-hmm. And yeah. uh, like this morning, driving my daughter to school, we were listening to Eric B and Rak- Rakim, you know, yeah. and then coming home, we were listening to uh, uh, Power Punk, Pop Punk. Uh, the Muffs, a band called The Muffs. I don't know mm-hmm. if you can know them. They were just yeah. great. And um, I just I just love it all. And But, nice. but like you were saying, I love bands. I never appreciated bands that um, would, uh, you know, songs about Dungeons and Dragons. and That weren't real. Like that. Wasn't my thing, you know? So not Led Zeppelin. <laughs> there, there are exceptions to that rule, motherfucker. Don't I was go. gonna, I was gonna say, but you, I know, but I was like, uh, uh, uh. I know you like Led Zeppelin. <laughs> That's blasphemy. I know. Blast but I, as soon as you said you it, I was looking, like, wait, it. looking the way you do, really, <laughs> really, yeah, yeah. But let's be real, Led Zeppelin. Can we be won. real about this? Can we? Let's, yeah. yeah. Let, Let's be yeah. real. One Led Zeppelin, one, two, and three. That's all you really need. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would go all the. I, I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. Go ahead. I get. I get a big to differ. I would go all the way to physical graffiti. I love physical graffiti because it's such a clusterfuck of ideas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is. You know, yeah. It's like the White Album. You could. You tell oh, us. Good comparison. Teams, but and. They were doing their own thing, and then they would come together and do things. But I right. think I think there's brilliance in the sound of, of things falling apart. Yeah, mm-hmm. so that's where I would differ with that. And I think House of the Holy is a great fucking album. Yeah, mm-hmm. House of the Holy is is, is all right. I was One of my favorites. I, I've never been a fan of Four. I dude, oh, because you've heard every song a million and fifteen times. <laughs> you don't ever need to hear that album again. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, yeah. Well, I heard it when it came out, and I didn't care for it. So oh, really? That, okay. That's just oh. me. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. You know, After hearing I mean, one, one through three, I, I thought it was a step down. Wow. A lot of people, a lot of people felt the songs I like on that album are the songs that are not like, um, the constantly played. I, well, yeah, I don't need to hear Black Dog. I don't need right. to hear, um, uh, yeah. Stairway to Heaven, but like mm-hmm. Four Sticks. Four um, Sticks is good. Yeah. Going yeah. to California. When oh, the love that was one breaks. of my favorites. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Love When the Love You Breaks. Just that, mm-hmm. that, that, that harmonica that's like back, going backwards and you're getting feedback out of it. Yeah, man. No. Mike, yeah. It's pretty fucking punk. That Even, was the best. Just that attitude of like, of, of Jimmy Page producing shit is like, I'm on heroin, yeah. I'm worshiping Satan, I'm fucking <laughs> a 13 year old. Let's try it. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's give it a try. <laughs> Holy shit. Well, oh, and the man. rhythm, the rhythm <laughs> section of Zeppelin never gets its due either because Bonham oh. and John Paul Young, I mean, you know, two of the most unique drummers and bassists ever were together there and they they're overshadowed and my yeah least, if you single that stuff out it's robert, good my least favorite thing is robert plant even yeah. though i like robert plant i'm gonna mm-hmm. i'm gonna back him up and he was very nice to me when i met him very very nice so mm-hmm. i'll give him that but yeah that i i don't usually like what? that shit. yeah <laughs> yeah and iron maiden met the guys great guys great musicians it's about yeah. voices for me, man. I hear. What do you think yeah. of that Give band? John Give me John, John Doe. You know. Yeah. Yeah. What do you What do you think of that band? Do you know the band Greta Van Fleet? Yes. That's how. Now. Yeah, dude. What do you? No, no, no. Same, but I, same expression. Make, yeah. You're making me crazy. Have small mouth. 
You're making <laughs> well, I was going to say the craziest shit about that is how much that band denies they were influenced by Zeppelin. I'm like, are you out of your fucking mind? Shut like, the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> I will whoop you, little skin. <laughs> <fucking roll out. laughs> exactly. I'm like, the fuck are you own, talking about? Own the shit, man. Yeah, own exactly. That oh, fucking drove me crazy. We played a show in some small town. This is like four years ago. Some mm -hmm. um, uh, summertime, some festival. And the opening band were these kids that were like 16, 17, 18 years old. And they were doing, and they were like totally ripping off Led Zeppelin. But they were fucking amazing. I mean, <laughs> our player looked like me, looked like my daughter, right? Yeah. You know? Skinny little kid, long, <laughs> and he's fully doing the the Jimmy Page, you know, um, kind of shuffle across the stage and uh, shit like yeah. that. Yeah, the Les Paul, and I'm just like, God, I mean, if I was a 15 year old girl, I'd fucking jump your bones. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was so fucking rock and roll, <laughs> and I don't know what happened to those kids because their dads kept trying to produce them and make them sound like. The, the, the Doobie Brothers and shit like that. Uh, oh, that's fucking rough. Oh, no, no. Come down, come out, hang out with Uncle Art. I'll, I'll turn you on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, off topic, off topic, um, Art, did you ever get to play with Screaming Trees? Um, no, but I, I really like them. I, f I feel like they are the most underrated of the whole grunge era. I, I think that they, I, I think they blew Nirvana away personally. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> we can agree to, to disagree. Hey, I don't okay. agree with, I don't, <laughs> we can agree to disagree. Mark but, Lanigan but, is a poet, baby. Well, he is a poet. <laughs> he is a poet. I, 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 I agree. I would argue that so was Kurt in yeah. a different kind of way. A diff total different take on songwriting and expression but point being um i i see i mean you know their voices are so different i mean oh yeah mark monaghan has got that oh you yeah. know that big yeah. deep voice and pretty amazing mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so if that's your thing i totally get it and and you know the, not the skinniest band ever no you know? <laughs> But, uh, <laughs> what a great side critique! Not the skinniest band ever, oh, but those, 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 those boys have never messed a meal. No, <laughs> reinforce the stage. Yeah, yeah. They fucking, dude, I saw. Oh them my god! Several times they fucking rock. Never played with them. Never played. Yeah, with them. yeah. Do yeah. You, one of my have, favorites. Is there is there any particular person that you wanted to play with that you didn't get to? Um. You mean play a show with? Yeah. Well, I played a show with John Doe. I've never played with X, but played with John Doe mm -hmm. uh, solo. Uh, nice. Wow. That's incredible. Was that was that like a? Can you even believe you were doing it? I was. It was kind of weird. It was weird. Yeah. Um. I don't know, man. You know, it's just like at the time, after the fact, I would kind of pinch myself about shit like that. Hold right. on. Right. Hold uh -oh. on. With the 14th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select Elijah Rivera Tucker, guard. Big old boy up on the front line, hog molly. And people would lose a lot of money if they were betting on that Jets pick right there. Yeah. I can tell you that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, money. that Jet pick, just so you know, came from the Seahawks for Jamal Adams last uh, year. That yeah. was our pick. Yes, it yeah. was. Trading so, up. <laughs> well no we got we we dude i think it was i think it, we, you know we gave him two first and a third and i think it was money well spent to be honest with you yeah i agree for your for, for what they needed it was money yeah, well spent. Th sure. that guy kicked ass he he had more more sacks nine point five sacks than any safety ever in the history of the game so wow hey, anyway, you know, i didn't know that stat. So, sorry we're such football geeks <laughs> nerds <laughs> No, no, I, I appreciate all, any and all nerd culture. You've seen me. This is the, this is the only time I'm not wearing a, a superhero shirt right now. So I got a, I got a fantasy football league going on. I got Gandalf. I got Hulk. Uh, I, no, I'm just kidding. I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, Dude, I love I love the Lord of the Rings. I love me too. I, I am such a nerd. 
And I just found this out. I don't know if you know this, but Amazon paid $494 million. They're putting $494 million, half a billion dollars, into the first season of The Silmarillion. No Ooh. fucking way. Wow. Holy shit. That's incredible. Oh, that's going to be. I didn't know they put that much into Peter, it. That's amazing. Peter, Peter Jackson is the executive producer on it. Oh, fuck. That's awesome, man. With the way CG is now compared to 25 years ago. Yeah. God, it's going to be. I think that's like more than half of what Game of Thrones was. And that was pretty impressive with the dragons and shit. So I can't imagine oh. what this is going to look like now. Oh, yeah. It's going to look amazing. But I see that's the thing, man. When it comes to my music, I am so not a fantasy guy. And yeah, I, I'm a big, you know, when it comes to poetry, um, uh, I like a lot of mo modern scat type pop poetry, and I like um, uh, torn page stuff. And I mm -hmm. like, uh, um, I go back to Walt Whitman. I love the, the whole Walt Whitman. Yeah, I did a I mean, paper on him, and uh, when I was in college, yeah, he's, I love Walt I Whitman. Did, I did, I, I did a twenty page paper on on Walt Whitman. Did and, you really? Uh, and in, in, in what college. That's incredible. Yeah. I see. I, I love. I love uh, songs that are about shit. Make me happy, and I find it like normally. Whenever I'm dating somebody, they like the the super poppy shit, which I have nothing against. Like a good, it's like fast food. You know what I mean? I call it fast food music sure. because it's fine once in a while, and it's the dance shit. But I sometimes I'm with people, and they're like, "How could you listen to whatever? It's so depressing." I'm like, "Depressing my ass, man." They're telling a fucking story. They're getting through shit. They're teaching mm -hmm. you, you know, how to deal with life. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I love all that stuff. Well, that's that's you can thank punk rock for that because uh, yeah, oh yeah, rock and roll didn't have that until the late seventies, late early eighties. Um, and I agree. And my point that I was trying to make was that it's weird, but when it comes to like reading, just like for me, fun fiction. Mm -hmm. You know, like I'll read a serious book. Uh, I usually read about three books at a time, and I'll read oh, a, a, a bi biography, but then I'll read science fiction, and yeah. I'll mm -hmm. or I'll read really good fantasy, like mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, <laughs> like Ayn Rand. That's <laughs> fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to throw that in there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Tolkien, I love Tolkien. Tolkien. I love uh, Robert Heinlein, the old classics. Oh, um, I used to read that. Yeah, Dune. I stepped I'm so in excited it. about the Dune. movie coming out. Me too. I think that yeah. one's going to be amazing. I think that one's going to be fucking great. Yeah, the guy who's doing it, who, 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 you know, it's going to be a. Amazing. Whenever, whenever somebody's working on a film like that and they're a huge fan of it, I'm, a, I'm like, this is. I mean, I get excited because I know they're going to do it justice. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Enthusiasm, man. It, mm -hmm. it makes up so much. So it always man. always pisses me off when they give something to somebody like, "Hey, so and so is doing this comic book movie," and then they give him an interview and they're like, "I've never read a comic book. Uh, I don't know the characters." I'm like, "The fuck!" Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> come on. Uh oh, another draft pick. Yeah, <laughs> Mac Jones, the quarterback, got picked by the Cardinals, which makes no kind of sense. Why mm. did they? Pick, why did they pick a quarterback? They I have, don't know. They picked a quarterback first round last year. Sometimes right? there's a reason, though. Sometimes it's defensive because because they're planning to make a move with another team. So it's almost like chess, where it's like uh, I know he's going to go to this to this guy, and he uh, took this guy. Uh, you know, maybe guys. maybe it's Atlanta because they they took they took the tight end. Maybe they'll trade him for because I've been hearing that. Uh, what's up. his name? The the wide what's their wide receiver on Atlanta? Atlanta? Um, um, starts with a J. Hold on, I'll tell you. I'll think. I'll, I'll find it. Uh, we all have phones. We're like, who is it? <laughs> I, I'm I'm forgetting his name. He's got two names. Julio start, Jones. Huh? Julio Jones. Julio Jones. Two names yeah. that start with J. Um, yeah. and I heard that <laughs> he wanted to get traded, so maybe they're gonna trade across. Smart. See. Mm -hmm. Man, okay, we got to find the good money to bet on that. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's, we just figured it out right there. All right, guys, I got to go eat my vegetarian fucking nightmare dinner. <laughs> yeah, please. <dude. laughs> Such a pleasure. Tell, tell, apologize to your wife uh, for me for keeping you. 
oh no way, I'm putting you, I'm throwing you under the bus, dude. <laughs> They, they were working on the here. podcast. You're going to write under, you know, the, the double wheels at the back of the bus? Yeah. <laughs> Triple axle, four wheels. Yeah, you're going to. <laughs> uh, thank, thank you so, so much, seriously, for coming on, man. It's been a blast. True pleasure for me. Thank you so much. Thanks yeah. For, yeah. yeah bro, thanks for joining us, brother. Um, thank you, Art. Yeah, man. Uh, best, best to your daughter, best to, to, to your wife. Uh, another MS warrior. Best to your mom. I hope she figures out what's going on, John. Um, Thanks, man. Everybody out there, thank you for having me. Hope it was... If there's anything we could do for you, let us know, too. I that, it. We'll make well, sure we're at that next show. Keep an eye out. May, May 3rd, we're going to uh, look online. It's going to be all over the place. Go to everclare.com uh, or everclaremusic.com and, uh, or Facebooks or Twitter or Instagram, and we're going to announce... Summerland 2021, the first line. Sweet. All right. Definitely be there. Looking forward to that. I will be there right. when they're in the tri state for sure. Cool, man. Well, man, let me know when you guys, if we're coming to a place near you, let me know. Um, you guys got my my email and stuff. Let me know. Yep. I got your um, number. I'm gonna be texting you for that band go, info. Go through Joey. <laughs> and, and, yeah. <laughs> you you yeah. <laughs> You and your mom, but that would be. <laughs> I got friends. I have friends. I just haven't seen them. That's all. <laughs> all right. All right. Take care, man. Peace. Before they kill me. Bye, guys. Yep. Dystopia tonight.